Hello everyone, nice to see you again. Today's video is going to cover another question 2 of piano composition in grade 8 music theory. And also question 2 is voted the most difficult question in grade 8 music theory test paper. Among all my students, the most difficult part in this you know, work that we are going to discuss today is finding keys, modulations, working out the chords and cadences. Let's look into it now. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe. That will be the best encouragement for me to continue making more videos like this. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Piece of music is in C major. Because there are no key signatures, and the opening chord here is a G. If you write down the letter name, it's G, F, B, and A. And this can form the chord 5 of C major, which is G, B, B, F, A. Okay, that's why I think this is a C major. But later on, as it move on, move, as it move on, you can see that uh, there are some accidentals over here, the F sharp to G and D sharp to E. And you can see that this is actually a dislocated chord. Okay, and so we will regard this as a, just an apocatura. These two can be regarded as uh, apocatura and it resolve one semitone higher. So I will not add this into the chord notes at all. That's why I will remain as C major over here. I understand some students may want this to be uh, F sharp, which is the E minor. In E minor, there's the F sharp and then the D sharp is a seven note. So this is uh, another possibility because Later on, it go to E minor chord, E, G, B. This is why E minor chord. So that is another option. But over here, I prefer to stay at, uh, stay at C major to make it simple. So over here, uh, continue as a C major. And later on, uh, there is a modulation again. In the second bar, there is a B flat <coughs> and C sharp. Over here, when the flat and sharp coexist together, usually we will regard flat as a key signature. And then the C sharp, we regard it as a seven note of minor key. So over here, I will say this is more like a D minor, the key of D minor, because D minor has B flat, and then the seven note is a C sharp. And also, you can see that there is a cadence five A C E G B five nine and two chord one D F A. Mm. So there is a good reason to decide this to be a D minor. Also because this is the leading note, seven note, and then this is a tonic, leading note to tonic. Okay. So um, let's complete the chords later. We decide the key first. In third line, you see new accidentals, which is a D, F sharp, A. Okay, so the F sharp um, can be regarded as a key signature because the key signature of sharp usually start with F sharp. So over here, I will say this is a G major. Because this is a D F A, which is dominant chord of G major, okay, uh, D F A, and after that you can see that this can be regarded as another apogatura again, and you can see this is G B B chord again. It go to one, which is a G B B, okay. So just nice you have a cadence, and a lot of someone asked what what is happening here, and these two sharps I will regard it as G sharp, E sharp to be treated as the auxiliary note, chromatic auxiliary note. Because it doesn't make much sense if you uh, consider this to be part of the key. G sharp and E sharp doesn't form any key signature for modulation or it doesn't belong to any key. We don't have G sharp, E sharp, uh, F sharp together. Okay, so we, I will just regard this as auxiliary note. And towards the end, there is a F sharp again. So it looks like this is a G major and it ends with a G. Okay, so the last line, I will take it as a G major. Mm. Okay, let's continue to look at the chords here. So G, B, D, F, A, and then the next chord, I can use 1, C, 5, and 1. Because 1, C is because there is a G over here. Okay, so C, E, G. And if you study music theory, you should know 1C is a good chord to approach the um, cadence. So this, usually we call it approach chord. Okay, so you will score very well if you know how to use approach chord before you have cadence, okay? So now let's continue from here. 
So this is 1C, 5, 1. Second line in D minor, if you name the note, you can see this G, F, A, B, G, B, B, F, A. So what is uh, E doing here? This is F, E, D. So this E can be regarded as a passing note, just a passing note. So we don't include E in the chord. So in that case, this can be just chord 4, G, B, B, F, A. And here, we can have another cadence. Mm. So since this is a D minor, over here we can have uh, E and G. Mm. So E and G, it, it looks like a, another cadence towards the end. So over here I will say, this is more like a C major key. C, E, G, and then chord 5. GBD or we can have we may have another option because this B crescendo mark the end of the session so I want to end this part properly so I will put one five seven and one to end the first session and this is a new session already MF and very expressive so in order to end it properly, I would use 1, 5, 7, and 1. Let's move on to the next section. Next section, we start with G major. Then later on, uh, 5, 1, and the key of G major. The next key, I will move on to... Um, I will move on to A minor. The reason I moderate to A minor is because I see a sequence here. Over here, this is... E, D, D, and then the next one is F, E, E. So this F, E, E is actually a sequence of the previous phrase. Okay, so can you see this is actually a sequence of this. So they are imitating, imitating each other. So the next one, I will use uh, A minor because it's just two steps high. This one starts with E, D, D. The next one starts with F, E, E, which is two steps higher. So over here, the key, I will go to A. G major, I go to A minor. And I cannot use A major is because the F is natural. Okay, so that's the reason you cannot use A major. So I use A minor in order to make a sequence. So A minor, again, I will imitate left hand, I will imitate this. Since I'm imitating it and doing the sequence, we have to use the uh, same chord five to one. Okay, so the last bar is a G major. And I will use F A C E here uh, because this G I take it as a obligatura again. So this piece of music has a lot of obligatura, and I will harmonize this as F A C E. And then after that, I proceed to chord one C G B D. Okay, another approach chord before you. Uh, move on to the cadence five seven and one because the bass note here is a D. Okay, so this one they already suggest you to use second version. So another approach called before your cadence. So D F A C. This is G B D. Let me write down the note A C E. So the it's very important uh, that you need to be able to write down the keys, the modulations, and find out the uh the find out the cadences and chord progression. After you written down, after you have written down all the chords, the letter names, then you on then only you'll be able to print the notes. And I don't know whether you notice that this is a sequence of this imitation. So the right hand has dotted quiver followed by semi quiver. So the left hand you can copy this. So uh, you can put rest, and then uh, this is a G B D F. Okay, I will put the B here. G D 
G and F to accompany as accompaniment. And you notice the left hand note that I chose is from the chord to accompany G, D, F. So for right hand, I will imitate this melody here. G, D, G. And uh, because there is a apogetura, so over here I also make a apogetura, which is a D sharp before resolving to the chord note, which is E, because this is C, E, G. So this is another apogetura, which is a semitone lower than this. So for left hand, this can be just C and E, chord, and then C. Next line, G, B, D, F, A. Um, so A, D, A, so A is a chord note. A, I will go to G, then I recite to repeat the A. So remember this, when you re repeat the A, repeat the note, you can add auxiliary note. Okay, so this is to smoothen the melody so that you will not sound so jumpy. Okay, next bar, uh, you need another two crotchets. So the tonic is A, and the missing note is E. Okay, so you are encouraged to add the third note because C sharp to E is a third. So you you will always make your uh, harmony sound more rich if you have a interval of third or six. And over here I add A because you need to have a root note. Okay, the root tonic note, the first note of the chord is very important. That's so why I add in the A, and then followed by E, which is a chord note also. Uh, next one, D, F, A, I will choose D, E. Okay, so this D is from the chord, and then the E is the anticipation. Okay, so this rhythmic pattern is to imitate this. So D, E, E, and C, E, G, I will use the C and G from a chord again. So you notice that the left hand notes always choose from a chord and left hand can skip very far like this. And then five, seven is G, B, D, F. So I choose the important note. When the chord has four notes, the first and last must appear. So G and F, I feel in ready. And this is a perfect cadence. So please remember to lead your leading note to the tonic. So the leading note here is a B and tonic which is a C. So leading note to tonic means you already home. Okay, go home before you move on to a new section. Okay, when you have cadence at the end, please don't forget this. And the left hand can just put C, E, and then lower C. Okay, so as the left hand can skip very far, as long as the note that you choose come from the harmony, come from the chord. So over here, this is G, go to leading note and C. So between G and B, I add in a passing note to smoothen up the melody. So when you are composing the melody on your own, please remember to add in more passing note and auxiliary note because that will make your melody sound smoother. Okay, next one, E, D, D. Okay, I don't know whether you can recognize the sequence over here. I use the green pen to show you. Over here, you have F, E, 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 E. So over here, this E, D, D. So they are expecting you to write something that is similar to this. Okay, so you need to be able to catch the hint by add, uh, using a sequence here, or, in, or you can say it's an imitation. So over here, I also repeat. Okay, like what you did, like what you see here. Okay, now left hand, since they are doing this, so this whole thing, I can also repeat here. Okay, using the same interval and same steps. Okay, so from here to here is four steps. So over here, I will choose uh, B. So that is also four steps, just like this. Okay, that, that's the meaning of sequence. Same intervals and same uh, rhythmic structure. 
So G and B, because of A minor, the G has sharps. Um, so this one go down to auxiliary and then go back. So over here, I also do the same thing in left hand. So go down as uh, to add the auxiliary note, which is A sharp and F double sharp. And before going back to G and B. Okay, after that, over here, I choose a G, which is a tonic note, rest. Okay, so over here, D to G is four steps. So the next phrase, I also go the same thing, four steps. Because this is a tonic, going to the tonic. And the left hand, we have A, tonic, uh, the root note at the base. So this is a B sharp and C sharp. So over here, I choose to skip to this note. It's because I can hear that the, the sound is nice. So during exam, if you don't have a piano with you, you can choose to move to the nearest note. For instance, D, uh, you can choose to remain as D. So it's safer. This is to avoid you to jump to a interval that may sound awkward to you if you cannot hear the tune. But over here, I know that D skip to G will sound nice because I tried on the piano before. Okay, so I skip here. But in exam, if you don't want to take risk, you can choose the nearest note, not to skip. Okay, next phrase. Um, again, I will use this opening for the next phrase. Same type of rhythmic pattern. Okay, the next chord is F, A, C, E. So I will choose A, which is the chord note. Choose any chord note. So A, G. So this A can be treated as the upper ketura. And the G. No, sorry. This A is a part of the chord. This is the chord note. And this G is the anticipation to anticipate the next note, G here. And then the left hand note will be E and G. Or F. and A, which is from the chord. And I want this to be minimum, to hold for two counts, F, A, and the next chord will be C and F sharp. Next. I will choose the nearest note, which is a D and G. Okay, the G must be here because it's a root note of the chord. So I choose G and D to make the uh, harmony richer. Okay, one C has a strong harmony structure. So G and I repeat G. When I choose to repeat the chord note, I can add auxiliary note. After G, you can go to D. Okay, again, I know this is a nice interval. G to D is a perfect form. But if you are not confident with this, you can choose the nearest note to move to. Okay, next bar is D, F, A, C. So the left hand, I choose D. And C. Okay, so you can have any kind of rhythmic structure as long as it's a chord. Okay, the note that you choose come from the chord. Then the right hand, I will choose F. Okay, so D and F again give you an interval of third, a richer harmony. Between F and A, I can put G as a passing note. Okay, then the next note, I will choose F and C. So that you have F, A, C. Okay, so the D hold, is holding for three counts. So D, F, A, C, a full dominant seven. Raising up. And I want the tonic to sustain for three counts. Uh, towards the end, G, B, D. So this is G and B. 
and then uh, G. Okay, uh, so that's all for today. And perhaps I can play on the piano so that you know how it will sound like. Okay, let me make it smaller so that you can see the whole entire score. forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in my next video tutorial. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.